And welcome back to Penalty Box Radio right here on ESPN 1025 The Game. Justin Bradford, Glenn Blackwell, and really excited for our next guest. Uh, he's had a taste in the NHL. He creates awesome content on YouTube. Lots of goaltenders look up to him and follow him for his content, just the behind-the-scenes aspect that he gives of, of life as a professional hockey player. And, uh, Glenn, we are joined now by Cosmer Kaskaswo, National Predators goaltender. Cosmer, thanks for joining us, man. Oh, thanks for having me on. So it's been, I mean, off air we're talking, it's been a weird year. Uh, so just overall, what has this been like for you? I mean, it, the whole off season happens, you, you sign with the Predators and everything, and then it's just been this weird condensed season. So overall, just what's it been like for you? Yeah, uh, weird is a good word to use, uh, <laughs> but I think we're all lucky to just be playing games again and kind of getting back to our routine that we missed for almost a year. So yeah. Uh, yeah, a lot has happened since the uh, since the bubble and the last four years I was with Toronto. So obviously it's a big change going in free agency and then kind of liked how the setup that Nashville had to offer and um, it's been it's been great so far. And joining the guys been really uh, very easy transition. Everybody's so welcoming and uh, nice. So it's been it's been a right decision for sure. And Casimir, you came in for Pekka Rene after that fifth Carolina goal a couple of weeks back. I've long since been intrigued by goaltenders for a multitude of reasons. But for one, having not started a game and sitting on the bench, watching the game play out, and then within seconds, you're out there. How do you stay mentally psyched, physically psyched when you're sitting there unsure of whether or not you're going to be in that game or not? Yeah, it's, it's tough. It's obviously not ideal for to hop in and especially in the third period with 15 minutes to go, but um, I've kind of started the last couple of years to do some stretching and trying to get some workouts done actually between periods if I'm not playing. So kind of like lower body dress pads on and pants on and just kind of try to get some squats in as much as I can just to be ready if anything happens, if an injury or, or stuff like that. So kind of be ready physically not being sitting there for two hours straight so uh but yeah everything like now thinking back like everything happened so quick when like you get the call and next thing you know like the puck's already in play and <laughs> you don't really you don't get too much time to warm up like pitchers too from coming out of the bullpen but uh yeah mentally like obviously it was just fun i was i was trying to uh, enjoy it i haven't played in a year so um, just especially playing in my second career NHL game, like just uh, taking it all in and enjoying it. So um, overall, it was a good experience. I felt good out there. And the guys, guys did a pretty good job for me, only allowing three shots on, in 15 minutes. So I got to enjoy it a little bit, obviously, hoping hoping the team would have could have pulled off a win. But uh, now we move on. And looking back on that moment, I mean, like you said, you barely even have any time to think. So I was I was actually curious, like, what is that? What is that like, that skate over from the net to the bench like for you? Because this was your first game as a Nashville Predator. Yeah, I mean, it's like I said, everything kind of happens quick. And like next thing you know, the game's already over. Like you, the less the less thinking, the better. It, it usually goes in goaltending pretty well. But um, yeah, I think Carolina scored like three quick goals in the first period. They kind of were on a roll there. And I think my heart started pounding pretty hard after that third one, but didn't, didn't uh, go in. So I hopefully uh, that kind of settled the worst nerves. And then uh, obviously when got the call to jump in the net and um, just trying to do, do the things we've been working on and um, just kind of play my game and go up to speed. And like I said, enjoy it. And last October, I'm going to switch gears a little bit. Last October, you made this very creative space for fans to help you design your gear, which I absolutely love. So I wanted to talk about that. Like, what was the inspiration behind that? How did that come to be? And do you feel like that kind of helped get you that established connection between you and the Nashville fan base? Yeah, I mean, so like I said, last four years in Toronto, like you kind of come up with all kinds of gear and mass designs during those four years of what could be but it was all Toronto based so now it was a new team and I didn't really have anything planned out what I wanted to uh wanted to do and obviously um you know I'm a hockey fan myself while playing the game so kind of understood how much the fans are craving that 
interaction and content pretty much. So uh, just figured I'll throw it out there and see if there's any, any cool designs because there's a lot of creative people out there and uh, they know their, their predators pretty well and kind of what they've seen in the past with the goalie. So uh, yeah, obviously it turned out to be a little different with uh, the Milwaukee had like different colors and Nashville had different and um, ended up going with a little bit of Milwaukee colors for team team guidelines and uh but now i actually have a pred set coming in about a week so excited to get some gold finally on my pads and i'm sure we're going to see that in a, in a video as well so because i know you just released <laughs> oh, the video sure. of your of your helmet too which is pretty awesome nice and simple like you said and again joining us right now is Casimir kaskaswo national predators goaltender and let's, let's take a step back because i mean you've been in north america for a while now since the 13 14 season when you play in the nahl just what drew you to coming to North America? Was it that part of, hey, if I want to make it in, as a pro, I need to go over more quickly? Were you approached by the by the NAHL? Just what kind of drew you over to coming and playing in, in North America? Yeah, I can I can definitely say that my route's been very different from from others, and uh, as as late bloomer as possible, I feel like. But um, yeah, I was playing in the juniors in Finland for three years, and I was never the starter. I mean, I had some good goalies in front of me, like uh, Corpus Allo for Columbus and Lankinen, who plays for Chicago now. So uh, I was backing up those two guys. So I, I wasn't losing to like nobody. So I, they're, they're really good, <laughs> good goalies for sure. But um, yeah, I felt like I was stuck a little bit. And then I had one more year as a juniors left. And um, there's not a whole lot of college guys from Finland at the time. And there's only a handful. And I, all I, played with all of them and they were good friends. So kind of learned about the college route from that, those guys. And um, yeah, I had one, one year junior eligibility left and just kind of talked to my advisor. It was either trying out for a USHL team or taking a, going to division three college right away. So I was actually kind of thinking both of those options at the time and decided to go one more year juniors and try it out for uh, Tri City Storm in the USHL and did not make the team and so it was cut from the camp and then um, that was during the summer so then just flew back home to Finland and uh, waited to hear back from my advisor and then just one day got a call that you want to go play for the Minnesota Wilderness in the NAHL and I said yeah let's do it so <laughs> very different kind of story <laughs> it is but but you made it and you you formed a career out of it too and and we're seeing as well that what's what's unique about you with the content you create is that you're willing to be open about things and it's not to, to disregard what other athletes feel like but you've been very open with conversations and understanding the the business side of hockey as well and everything what has inspired you to to be open like that to telling stories and giving that behind the scenes look because you're I'm not trying to just build you up, but you're very good at it too, of putting these behind the scenes looks that people want and they, they crave and it gives people an inside look. So what has inspired you to be that way? Yeah, I mean, I think it all comes from, comes from just being stuck in quarantine when COVID first hit. And then, um, you know, like I said, as a hockey fan myself, I, I was trying to think like, what what do the fans want right now? And I feel like, doing something different like that with YouTube was um, obviously I'm, I'm still a little uncomfortable doing that stuff and I don't want any, any of my teammates to know, but uh, a couple, I think a couple of them do, but, um, but yeah, it's, and the, the feedback's been, been great. So that's, that's the only reason I keep doing it. If there was anything bad to say, or the team didn't want me to do it, then obviously I'd shut it down, but I got a lot of traction and, um, the feedback's been great. So I definitely see that there's a demand for it, but I think it was, it was funny just today. There was something about NBA is doing a much better job of uh, marketing their players and all that kind of stuff, branding their players and stuff like that. So uh, yeah, I mean, I feel like I'm like the one of the only guys who's doing this stuff and I, it's kind of different in hockey circles, but uh, just trying to keep it as positive as I can and kind of trying to create the content that uh, like me as a young hockey player growing up would have loved to see. And that's the behind the stuff, behind the scenes stuff. And I think every year when there was the winter classic and they did like the roll to winter classic, like that's, that's probably my favorite show ever. Like just watching like NHL players live and what they do day to day and 
all that kind of stuff. So I feel like I can provide a little bit of that while, while keeping it positive and keeping it team friendly and uh, not, not causing, causing any chaos because <laughs> right. that would be the last thing I, I want to do. But um, yeah, it's, it's been fun for sure. And uh, the fans seem to like it. So might as well keep it rolling. Yeah, they do. you built a community, and I mean, I, I love the logo too. The logo is pretty, pretty awesome with the gear that you're selling, and through Discord as well, you've created a great community of people that a lot of them are goaltenders. So it's really cool for them to have someone that they can interact with as well, which is really neat. And uh, part of the lifestyle that you share in there is, is a vegan lifestyle, especially with eating. I know that can't always be easy, especially on the road and traveling. And you even share those stories as well too. What inspired you to have that type of lifestyle and everything too? And me as someone, I'm trying to eat healthier now and be more active, especially coming out of the quarantine periods where I think a lot of us gained a lot of weight because we weren't able to be too active. Just what are some tips and tricks for those people that are trying to look for healthier options and healthier choices in their lifestyle? Yeah, I think it all, all started about a year and a half ago. Um, just kind of saw that that Game Changers documentary and guys always kind of pick on me like, oh, you watched the Game Changers? Like, like yeah, I did. But then that started, that like started me to go more into depth and like do some more research and uh, found out that there's all these benefits and were like, I noticed that I was just eating stuff that I was just used to eating. I wasn't really, you know, whatever was given, like I was eating and pretty basic stuff. And that kind of made me realize that maybe putting a lot more emphasis on my diet can really uh, give me a, give me a competitive edge. And I feel like I've done that so far. And um, yeah, doing all that research. And then obviously our daughter has this rare, um, rare condition where uh, she's kind of has a protein allergy, you could say it. So it's pretty mild and she's doing good. She's living a normal life and all that stuff. But when she was first, first diagnosed, she was supposed to be on meds for the rest of her life. And um, after being vegan for about four months and we did all her testing again and all the numbers were better. So uh, she doesn't need to be on meds anymore. So that's that alone is like a uh, big enough reason for us to uh, go plant-based. But yeah, I mean, stuff like that especially when you pay attention on um what you're eating and i don't i don't want to say that plant based is like a restricted diet but in a way it is in a good way like there's brownies at like some team meals and stuff so i can easily like oh those are not plant-based so i can skip them so that all that already is a healthier healthier right. diet for me so um yeah i mean the team has been really helpful too with the with the breakfast and lunch and all food while traveling and uh now especially now ordering food there's a lot of uh different plant-based options even those delivery apps and, and stuff like that so that was the one thing I was nervous like traveling with the team and how teams are gonna accommodate that kind of stuff but uh everything's been great and the Preds have been really good at it so um uh, it's been making my life easy Awesome. So before I have to let you go, because we are running on break now, I know you've been watching the Marvel movies and everything too. Do you have a favorite that stands out to you as in terms of movie and, and how far along in the MCU are you? Because I know you've just been kind of trudging along right now with all those movies. There's so many of them. Yeah, we, we are, we're on that two week road trip. So I'm, I'm done now. <laughs> so <laughs> got through all the movies, all the movies that are on Disney plus. So um, yeah, I, I can't say a favorite movie. I think all of, I didn't like realize that there really was a one long story, even though it was a completely different movies. So that was fun to watch it in timeline order. I've seen movies here and there, but now it all kind of made sense that mm -hmm. you had the time before my family came to Nashville and uh, with all the, all the road trips that I got to watch those and keep my memory fresh and kind of go through the whole story. So um yeah, really. I mean, it was either that or watching the Star Wars movies again. So I'm <laughs> glad I'm glad I picked the Marvel movies. But yeah, I'm, I think I'm like halfway through uh, WandaVision now. So Excellent. At least there's something more for me to watch. And every week there's Falcon Winter Soldier to start up too. So you're you're set for a while. <laughs> yeah, perfect. <laughs> so, well, a lot of road trips coming up too. <laughs> oh yeah, no doubt. Uh, well, well Casimir, thank you so much for taking the time to talk with us. We really appreciate you uh, helping us get to know you a little bit better. Perfect. Yeah. Thanks for having me on. And uh, it was a good little chat and hopefully the fans enjoyed it.
There you have it. Kazimir Kaskiswo, great content creator, started that up because of the pandemic and great to just talk with him and learn a little bit more about him, Glenn. And he's a great interview. He is a great interview. And I'm, I love that he is so open. Like he said, it's not very hockey centric to, to do stuff like that. I mean, the hockey right. world, we on the outside really don't get to see a lot of NHL players personalities there's right. just not really a space for it and I love that he's taken it upon himself to create that space um, because there really is such a great opportunity to engage with your fan base and also just establish that connection because oftentimes you know when when fans can't really get a good insight onto a player's personality all they really know is what they see on the ice and that's it. So they really sometimes don't feel that connection. And he, he definitely is creating a space for them to be able to do that. And I love, I love seeing that in this league. Well, make sure you go and follow him on YouTube. He has a verified channel, Cosmer Koskiswo, and he has great content behind his content, even with his family, what is happening during games, cooking, his, how he spends his free time, all of his goalie gear as well. So if you are a goaltender gear person, that is definitely the channel to subscribe to. He also has a Discord as well, where you can chat with him sometimes too in his Discord. He also has merch. So it's a great, great what, he, what he's doing and setting himself up for a great future as well, whenever that may be when he's done with his with, with hockey. Okay, up next, we have Tanner Janot, National Predators prospect, currently with the Chicago Wolves. That's up next here on Penalty Box Radio, ESPN 1025, The Game.